Because we also had older universities in the world. Uh, we had Nalanda, which is much more older than Oxford, but uh, Oxford is a standing institution now. And they got lucky that nobody came to destroy Oxford, but one of the people to destroy these universities are systems. Some of you know it's very complicated politics. So many parties, so many uh, issues that we fight on. Uh, we have very little thing that everybody agrees. Everybody fights on many things. But here, you see, the politics is a system not of compromise. Britain in the last 10 years had six prime ministers. India had one. And India will continue to have Modi for another 10 more years easily. When Modi Ji had met a lot of updation in the last 10 years, every time he communicated to us. And probably India as a country, uh, when you compare to advanced economies like UK and USA, COVID was better handled. Because communication, he kept it open as a prime minister. He always made sure he never allowed the experts to talk. He did it. When everybody thought that, oh, will all of us get vaccines, 142 crore people with vaccines be available everywhere. But Modiji took 33 days to stay back before taking that vaccine. He felt the first vaccine will go to the frontline worker. A frontline worker from, uh, from the state of Bihar working in Delhi took that first vaccine. So Modiji waited back. Maybe 20 years back, none of us are confident. I was not confident 10 years back. Because in India was not a confident country 10 years back. So all of us thought, okay, let me do a degree. For insurance sake, let me do one more degree. <laughs> and the two degrees cannot fail me and probably I'll get a job. That is how most thinking was. I'm, I'm sure many of you can connect with me. I'm also one, one of that guy. After I got into engineering, the first thing I knew one week into engineering is I don't want to be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> reason is very simple because coming out of politics is costly. Uh, very, very costly. And uh, uh, in India, rest of India, you can do things for one rupee. In Tamil Nadu, it means seven rupees. For it. One is to start a So you, you put the poster. In UBA, I wrote for one and a stack of poster, same communication in Tamil Nadu, I think seven rupees. You put a pandal, a big gathering where a leader has to come and talk. In UBA, if I do it in 30 lakhs in Tamil Nadu, I, I, I need one and a half crore to put a big pandal for 80,000 people to say. So everything is costly. Whole day for all of you, three, four hours standing outside, multiple change of venues. Some days are like that for me also, it is that kind of day. And suppose to catch a train, train got cancelled, even the next station it got cancelled, drove all the way here. And uh, my apologies, first of all, because I think the organizers were very clear that they wanted a combination of outsiders and students. And some kind of campus put is happening from, ex uh, from yesterday, and campus also needs to uh, keep security in their control. So, nothing to blame anybody. So, lastly, we are getting the opportunity to talk. Thank you so much. And the first question that Vasikir asked me is about uh, my fellowship uh, in Oxford and, and how it helps me and everything. Uh, I think that today's day is not about me. I'm very clear about it. It is about you and about our country and about what we are doing as a nation. And probably the next 25 years, the opportunity that we all get. But still, I'll take some minutes to just talk about me as a person. Uh, for me, this fellowship, I believe, has happened at the right time. Probably in Oxford. And uh, the great thing about this kind of university is uh, it's very different one. A uh, lot of multicultural students from different parts of the world. And they get to learn from them, they interact with them. And especially when you talk about liberal democracy, especially when they talk about the Western liberal democracy, you see all kinds of things happening in a single university. At one side, you see a Palestine protest happening, on the other side, you have an Israel protest happening. And uh, which I've seen in Oxford also, the campus seats and people coming there, uh, trying to barge into Vice Chancellor's chamber. <laughs> and uh, I, I believe in a way that the students here are a bit lucky because you get to see this in first hand. Unfortunately, Indian universities, politics is not happening in a big way inside the university, especially if you look at uh, the southern part, uh, especially after the JM Lingo Commission before the Supreme Court uh, has come down very hard on some parts. And the universities are able to find a common mid balance. So here at least I am feeling happy that uh, South we are, we are lacking the university politics. I think this is where you get you get shaped. Even today from morning, politics is an art of compromise always. And uh, to move it, you have to talk to somebody, give something, take something, it happens like that. So I am happy that this is happening to you. In Oxford I have seen, Oxford Student Union, the debates they bring in. And last, I think, uh, 13 out of 16 uh, Prime Ministers came coming from Oxford. You get to see why it is happening, why it is politically so active, why it is politically so vibrant. And more importantly, when you have that much diversity, people coming from different parts of the world, 
And your mind is always open to different things. You are not operating with a very close mindset. Your mind is always open. Some things you might like, some things you might not like. It's a different argument. But having said that, it keeps your mind open, keeps your mind young. Of course, Indian universities are great. When you talk about Oxford, which is thousand years old. And uh, when we go uh, somewhere slightly more, more older universities in the world, of course, we also had older universities in the world. Uh, we had Nalanda, which is much more older than Oxford, but o Oxford is a standing institution now. And they got lucky that nobody came to destroy Oxford, but you know, <laughs> to destroy the Indian universities our system. And I, right now, a uh, huge emphasis is being put there to rebuild the Indian uh, knowledge system, which we call the IK, Indian knowledge system, which the current government, Modi is very clear that uh, the new education policy, a part of your syllabus should be IKS, 10% of your credit should come from the Indian knowledge system. So we have lost a lot of things. When we come to this part of the world, when we talk about all the great things they are doing, uh, in India everything was, we had a sastra, we had a sastra for debate called Dakka Sastra, we, we had a sastra for dance called Natiya Sastra, uh, we had a sastra for medicine, uh, it, was, it was evolved sastras. But right now nobody talks about it because the system is gone, after the destroyed uh, universities is gone and that kind of knowledge system is gone, nobody talks about it. Now the same part of the world, they talk it as science. And you have a science for politics, you have a science for law, but India had a sastra. Uh, sastra is a better word than science because uh, it is much more deeper. So many a times you see what we have lost after coming here and, and it's, it's inspiration for a lot of us sitting in this room to go and rebuild it in our home country, uh, go and rebuild it, uh, bring the best of educational model there. So that next 100, 200 years, the next generation that comes, we kind of reclaim what we have lost. And that are the learnings for me. An application to politics, I always say that uh, there is nothing special to be a politician and uh, right now we talk so much about because India is a big country and very little politicians, uh, the elected politicians <laughs> because you hardly have 543 MPs for a population of 142 crore. For Britain you look at 85 million you have about 650 MPs. So here the politicians are more, so everybody aspires but India fortunately or unfortunately not everybody can uh, sit in positions of uh, uh, elected power where you can do something good for the society. So that way, I, I, whenever you ask me that question, uh, the immediate answer for me is somewhere that the students are far cut off from politics. That is where the question is coming. Either the politicians remain inaccessible or you are not part of the activism that happens in many of the campuses or you are not part of the political system inside in a big way. I hope it is changing uh, because after 2026, uh, once the 1971 amendment that we change, then the number of MPs have to go up. It has to go close to more than 8, 900, maybe less than 1,000. So, numbers have to go up. And I am looking forward to the day 33% of uh, those MPs will be from our mothers and sisters will be there. And, and proportionately, the assembly constituencies have to go up. Tamil Nadu 234 has to go somewhere close to 400. So, probably when you graduate from uh, London, uh, when you graduate from uh, different universities in the United Kingdom, when you come back to our country post-2026, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, because 2026, the amendments, uh, 25 years of 1971, and the extension takes over. So the parliament has to bring a new law to fix the boundaries and to fix the number of MPs in assembly. So when you come back, many of the young kids here, you might see MPs closer to 1,000 members, you might see uh, assembly constituencies, MLAs in each of the state close to 400. So which means they will see more people in action. So politics, end of the day, wants a, a human being who is more aware, who is very aware that what is happening around him. Uh, because you are not an expert. And, uh, uh, many places what happens, the politics, politicians operate with a close mindset. We just have to find out the best people who are available, collaborate with them, uh, try and bring to the common forum so that the best knowledge is used for the country's growth. So that is a great opportunity for me in fellowship to learn. Where knowledge is. And uh, uh, I saw some fantastic Indian students, uh, different scholars, doing some path-breaking research uh, in all kinds of fields. And uh, uh, when, you, when you go back, your mind is more open that can you bring everybody together, uh, can, can we do politics in, at least for me, uh, politics in a slightly more different way. In Tamil Nadu, you know, it's very competitive politics. Uh, so many parties, so many uh, issues that you fight on. Uh, very little thing that everybody agrees, everybody fights on many things. So, but here, you see, this politics is essentially not of compromise. Britain in the last 10 years had six prime ministers, India had one. And India will continue to have Modi for another 10 more years easily. <laughs> so here you have 10 people, uh, 6 people in 10 years. So continuous shuffling. Uh, a major political party just had a new uh, leader of the party, the conservatives. 
and they had multiple leaders over the last 20 years. So here you see politics is looks to be unstable from the outside. And probably India is getting into an era that politics looks stable, government looks stable, and uh, growth happens when there is stability. Across the world, when anybody looks at it, uh, pioneering growth, outstanding growth, growth of 8%, 9%, 10% is a good growth. It happens only when politics remains stable. So luckily, uh, fortunately, Modiji is there. He made politics stable. Before Modiji, none of us expected that politics in our country will remain stable. Sorry, I'm just expanding your question a bit. Because I want you to settle down a bit after all the galata that happened. Once he gets to propose himself a bit, that is why I'm intentionally giving a long answer so that he, he gets to propose more. Um, luckily, Modiji has brought in this era in our country from 2014 to say that uh, people can do good work and get elected and sit back in power. If you look at 1980 to 2000, uh, four out of five governments got voted out. So five governments are in power, four people got voted out. So it doesn't matter whether you did good work or not work, or not good work, because anti-incubancy invariably caught up with you. Now 2014 and Modiji's uh, uh, 2001 onwards in Gujarat has clearly shown, not only you do politics in a good way, you also communicate to the people that you are doing politics in a good way. Politics is two sides of a coin. One side what you do, other side what you communicate. When both happen, the citizen is aware, even if Modiji is making a decision like demonetization, why is he doing it? What is the need for doing it? He communicates it. This is why I am doing it. When Modiji had made a lot of updation in the last 10 years, every time he communicated to this. And probably India as a country, uh, when you compare to advanced economies like UK and USA, COVID was better handled. Because communication, he kept it open as a Prime Minister. He always made sure he never allowed the experts to talk. He did it. When everybody thought that, oh, will all of us get vaccines, 142 crore people, will vaccines be available everywhere? But Modiji took 33 days to stay back before taking that vaccine. He felt the first vaccine will go to the frontline worker. A frontline worker from uh, from the state of Bihar working in Delhi took that first vaccine. So Modiji waited back. So I think the great thing about Modiji is he's a fantastic political communicator. Many people don't focus on that aspect. He makes hard decisions. Yes, a country to move up has to make hard decisions. No, easy decisions will never make a country to move up. And when he makes the hard decisions, he makes sure that it's communicated to us well. And then we are aware of the implication and then we support our prime minister. Covid lockdown, hard lockdown, yes it's a tough patient. And the GDP of one quarter came down by 24%, hard patient. And a lot of uh, our worker friends have to move from south to north, yes it's a hard patient. But you have to do it because you have to pay my step. And how did you do it? Railways in operation, Indian Air Force planes flying. When oxygen uh, demand uh, was a problem, more demand of oxygen, less supply of oxygen. Our Indian Air Force plane flying across the world, Singapore, United States, even UAE, bringing back the cylinders. So that, you, you realize more when you come here. Here you see everywhere protest, everywhere there is an issue and everybody wants everything at the same time. In a democracy that doesn't happen always. And sometimes you got to be patient because it might not happen to you immediately. So here when you, when you, when you see, you, you realize how great voting is. It is not that people of the world just give them 76% approval rating and morning that's considered survey. When you sit in India, you see, okay, why is the West so appreciating more? It, it is also a fascination for me. Um, Modiji is a very beloved leader of the world. Morning Consult is a famous survey in the US which rates the world leaders. And Modiji consistently is around 71, 72, 73, 75, 76 percent. You are like, why do a person who doesn't see Modiji, probably living far apart in an European country or probably in a much, much more mature democracy, giving him consistent mark because they appreciate that he's making tough decisions. That is the important thing. And everybody knows that. And the next 25 years, India has to make more competitions. Because you cannot grow at 10%, 12%, to raise 55 trillion dollars. So, so instead of say, saying that I learned this, I learned that, it is more awareness, more seeing, or probably you go to an NHS system. If in India, everybody says, even, even anybody wants to start a new party, also immediately they say, I want to give you the uh, world class medical facility to Tamil Nadu or to other parts of India at this cost. When you come here, you, you see NHS, you know what it is the problems it is and also the good good things that are with NHS. So you understand probably in India when you try to replicate some parts of what UK is better, trains are better, public service is better, NHS is better because everybody gets an opportunity, quality health care you get. But of course the waiting time is so large and can India spend 250 billion dollars every every year on NHS. So this is the country that spends 246 billion dollars and 20 lakh people work in NHS, officially and unofficially. So, now, then you understand living here for some time like you, uh, students who live here for a long time, what works in India, what doesn't work in India. So 
question. I'm happy that you asked this question, brother, but sorry I took a long answer because I want you to get composed a bit before we start communicating with each other. Uh, what initially drove your transition from a career in law enforcement to politics? Was there a specific experience or moment that made that moment? Uh, Vasika, there is a time in your life you realize that uh, you, know, you are fallen through. And right now you are young, you are youth and uh, the world looks very small to you. Everybody at 22, 23, all the youngsters who are sitting here, the world looks small to them. And there is a friend who is sitting in the front row and he had an offer from the London School of Economics to do his MBA. London Business School. London Business School to do his MBA. So I was in IIT Chennai and that day he launched a startup idea. <laughs> then uh, I told him, don't go to London, stay in India. He said, why? <laughs> I said, look, it's a great school, fantastic school, nothing like it. You go there, but you're, you're giving two years of your life to something to get a degree which you want to learn. I don't know if you are from IIT Madras, you just passed out, you got a startup idea going. And one end Modi ji talks about making in India, 50 billion dollars. Since you have an idea now, you want to do it. If you don't have anything in mind, you can go do an MBA and come back. Since you have something you have started, why do you want to take a break for two years? Because two years is an opportunity cost. And that is why a lot of so-called great people, in, in eminent business people, they go to university, they drop out. Immediately they see the opportunity cost. Okay, I'm spending two years in Harvard or Stanford or London Business School or King's or LSE or whichever college in the world. Is two years worth I think this mindset, uh, all of us are getting now because we are confident. Maybe 20 years back, none of us are confident. I was not confident 10 years back. Because India was not a confident country 10 years back. So all of us thought, okay, let me do a degree. For insurance sake, let me do one more degree. <laughs> and the two degrees cannot fail me. And probably I'll get a job. That is how most thinking was. So many of us did very little based on passion. I'm, I'm sure many of you can connect with me. I'm also one, one of that guy. After I got into engineering, the first thing I knew, one week into engineering, is I don't want to be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, you can't go and redo the counseling. How many engineers have you flown to? No, no. That is because the social system pushes you to do that. Uh, for you, at instant, only two options. You want to be a doctor, you want to be an engineer. Sure. I knew I'm not good enough to be a doctor. So, okay, fine. Let me take it here. So, one week into engineering, I know I, I don't want to be an engineer. So, because many of us, we were not able to do things that gave us a lot of passion. Simply because the economy was not supporting you, or the country was not supporting you, or the social system was not supporting you very much. And, and many might know, many might not know. When I studied in IIM Lucknow during my MBA like you, my internship happened with Mr. Vijay Kant. So, 2009, uh, Lok Sabha elections were on. And first year of MBA. So, I'm like, okay, I've come to an MBA school. I felt at least insurance is done and uh, probably I'll get a job or probably I can start a company. Now time to take this. What I couldn't do previously, let me do. So the, uh, in, in Mr. Vijay Khan's party, there was a very senior leader called Bandhuki Namachan. So I went, went and met him. So it was an accidental meeting firstly, then I approached him. Then they gave me an offer to uh, work with Mr. Vijay Khan for the 2009 Lok Sabha, uh, three months. So my, my, my internship break also kind of aligned with that. So after working with Mr. Vijay Khan, who was a great leader, fantastic leader, a wonderful human being, uh, who had a great heart, who wanted to do great things for Tamil Nadu. So one thing I realized is I'm not cut out for politics. So reason is very simple because Tamil Nadu politics is costly, uh, very, very costly. And uh, uh, in India, rest of India, you can do things for one rupee. In Tamil Nadu, it means seven rupees for it. One is to seven pages. So you, you get the poster in UBA, you can do it for one and three. Stuck a poster, same communication in Tamil Nadu, I think seven rupees. You put a pandal, a big gathering where a leader has to come and talk. In UK, if I do it in 30 lakhs in Tamil Nadu, I need, I need one of crore to put a big pandal for 80,000 people to sit. So everything is costly. So the day when many of you who are here, when you aspire to get into any Indian political position, when you aspire to get into Indian politics, the day it will strike you, the politics is costly. That common people, a first generation guy, uh, probably whose mother father is a farmer or, a, or, a, or, a, or probably earning from a company who don't have much money. So politics, that is why in India, first generation people find it very hard to come. So for me, I, I knew that I am not going to be a politician. Very clear. So since you asked me why that shift, <laughs> then I went to civil service. Civil service, best thing for me. Uh, from Lucknow, during my MBA, I still remember that the way you are doing. 
and when I was writing my civil service exam, it just happened my MBA examinations and the civil service mains both clashed. I went and met the dean, I said, look, I passed prelims, now I have to write mains. I have taken the sector as Lucknow, but I have to finish my MBA also. <coughs> and I don't think many people have done both MBA and civil service mains together because you cannot write it. Then the dean said, you take civil service next year because I don't have a rule that to change the exam to one year, which is a fair enough. But the only thing I am requesting you is, can I write the exam in the evening? Mm -hmm. Or can you schedule the exam in such a way that my electives don't clash on the day my civil service mail system? So the student union president who happened to be a good friend also, he also fought with the dean. And I am that was kind enough to enable me to write it. So that is a crazy day. Morning I will go and write a mail exam. I borrow a bike from a friend Puri, then drive back to the campus, then I will write the MBA exam in the afternoon, then prepare in the night. You can't prepare civil service in the night, you can only go through the notes in the night. So three, four days it was like that for me. I was writing my mains, I was writing my MBA exam. So then you have to understand to leave everything to come into quality, why am I doing it? So you have taken so much pain, MBA itself was a pain, but you all know I am just like Getting into IMC is easy, getting out is tough. Because you follow this normal curve and the last 10% of the match or the class gets F degree or D degree, whatever it is. And from morning 8 o'clock till evening 10 o'clock, you are so crushed. You have very little time to think. And it is placement there. So, then, the reason I am giving you a long answer because, again, because is a student sitting here should never think something is easy in life. Or they should never think something is tough in life. So I am trying to give the both perspectives to them. Any decision they make, they should have the clarity. This is what it is. This is what my passion is. I am doing it for myself, not for others. I want this desperately because I think it is right for me. I think these are the answers a college should prepare you for. College should never prepare you for uh, with the King's College brand, with the London School of Economics brand, with the London Business School brand. The brand, the brand of course, brand has got a value. Two crore, three crore, three, whatever it is. <laughs> but that brand will vanish after a year. So I, I hope and believe this two years will give you the clarity. Civil service happened ten years. You always know politics is somewhere deep inside, and you you tried it once, you came out. Uh, probably you felt you felt the time is right. Uh, then I came. So for me, it was not one day decision. And many people say one fine day. No, it is a struggle and one attempt. You found again. I'm not because the questions are short. The answer should be short. Again, I'm not getting into how my internship happened. Then it is another thing. When I told I am like, no, I want to do internship with the political party, they said, you can't do it. You can't do because nobody from IAMs have done an internship with the political party because it is a, it is, a, it is registered under the society's acts. So then I have to go find, write to Mr. Arjit Singh, who was the MHR minister then, then find the IAM Lucknow board of governor, Mr. J.J. Irani, who was the Tata Sachs chairman, go convince him. Saying that me interning with the political party doesn't affect the IAF charter. So every time it is paid. So the point I am trying to make to my dear friends who are here, the eager audience who are here, anything you choose to do in life is going to be tough. Nothing is going to be easy. But be prepared, let your mindset be ready for it. And uh, I think willingly undergo that pain. Uh, willingly undergo that pain, enjoy that process. And probably you will slowly move towards your passion. Tomorrow morning, I am sure many of you might not realize your passion. It is not going to happen. Let us admit it. Financial problem, uh, opportunities are not open for everybody. There is an entry barrier. Tomorrow, some of you want to jump into politics. Not going to happen because there is a severe entry barrier. And you have to break it. You have to painstakingly break it one day. So you have to sit down, be passionate. In Oxford, they, they keep telling stories. How, how somebody becomes a British Prime Minister in Oxford. That's not happen. To win an Oxford Student Union President, you have to win eight elections. It's not a one election. And 20,000 people registered, 1,500 people vote. And they, they say a story, uh, former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto, Somerville College. She lost an election. But to, to win the next election, she again joined for Masters in Oxford, came and won the election, became the Oxford Student Union. So it's painstaking. So all the people, they find whatever open door, you break it, you go inside one by one. So that is my, I can't give you advice, I think you are much more intelligent than me, or you see the world in a much more brighter, bigger way. My, my only appeal to all my friends here, whatever you want to do, align it close to your passion and 
Even if it takes 10 years to reach there, you will eventually reach. But don't give it up. Find a way. Try to solve the problem. For me, 2009 intention, 2024, 2020, I joined politics. It took 11 years for me. And because of the entry barrier I have, my father is a farmer, my mother is a farmer. Both of them did not cross the standard. The only link they have close to politics is they both happily go to vote in the morning. And then, then child I see in my farm. My father has got this TV as 15. He will start the bike and my mother will be there. While going, they will go happily. But while coming back to the elections, I have seen either my mother will come back with my father or my mother's face will be like this, my father will be like this. <laughs> then I knew most probably my father must have insisted to my mother he should vote this way. And my mother must have rebelled it. And probably in the voting booth they must have had a fight. Now as a politician I have seen how people vote and mindset. And they will not even talk that way. Because my father thinks as a male, as a person, in his mind, a person outside the world, seeing more, he thinks, he, he knows everything about politics. My mother knows, she wants to vote her way. And I come from that kind of a family. That is the closest connection we have to politics. Then, next I'll tell you. Now, fight? Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Do they still fight? They <laughs> <laughs> don't fight. Now, now, the problem is, politics is so dirty. Uh, I don't tell this story out, but since it's a, it's a college and students, I never uh, share my personal things, I have to say this. And my mother uh, recently had cancer, uh, about a year back, a year and a half back, and we were very sure she cannot have cancer. And it's not a taboo subject, it is okay, I can, I can talk about it. And when you, we come from a village, my mother milks three cows in the morning, two buffaloes in the morning, and she takes cattle to the farm, comes back, no history of cancer in the, in the family. And there's no way she can have cancer. And, and in the long conversation with the doctor, I was trying to find out why it happened. Doctor said it is because of stress trigger, could be a reason, because nobody knows why. He said, then I had to sit down with my mother after I joined politics three years later, 2020, 20, <coughs> was starting. And I said, what, is there anything bothering you? She said, no, I'm fine, okay. I said, do you think I'm doing something wrong by which you are ashamed? She said, no, no, nothing. I said, then why are you feeling stressed? She was not answering. Then I called my sister. I said, all three have to sit down. So my mother, my sister, myself, we all sat down. Then I, my mother finally opened it out, saying that, I fear for your security. Every day I think that you will die. And I said, why do you fear? And she said, no, you are always in the crowd. You are walking with the crowd. You are shaking with the crowd. Somebody can take a knife and just... As a, okay, that was a realization for me because I am a police officer, former police officer, <coughs> and I think security in a very different way, and I think very different way. I am young also, but by, for my mother, I am a, I am a, I am a son, the same son born, and, and, and she put all her passion and effort to bring me up, and she sees different way. Then we have to take a lot of time to convince her that I am safe, There's not, nothing that is going to happen, don't worry. Then my 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 my, my daughter my, my my sister checked my mother's the phone feed. I am sharing this because I never shared this anywhere. But I thought we may deserve to know because a lot of you have this ambitions to get into politics and do things. And we went through her uh, phone. Uh, she got a small phone. We never knew that she can watch YouTube <laughs> because we never knew she can Google YouTube, go inside and see. So when we saw. Most of the things he was seeing is only negative things on me. So what happens is mother has this thing, when somebody talks bad about the son, she'll go and see. And because of this algorithm, something will push, something will push, something will push. Then we have to sit down, take the phone out, shift that to my mother's home. You have to understand? It is not we just come here and do politics. It is we have to face so many things to make a change. And change doesn't happen just like that. Then my mother loves the farm so much. Any, any person who is sitting here, you cannot separate a farmer from a farm. That is the biggest thing you can do in your life. And they are happy with their cow, they are happy with their buffalo, they are happy with their sheep. And my mother knows every sheep by name. She knows every sheep's daughter and son by name. And she knows when are they born. That accuracy, a farmer knows. Then I have to make this very painful decision in my life. To take her out of the farm, shift her to my sister. I said, just, just watch over her. I, I don't want her to again go back. So, the reason I'm trying to tell you is, parents look at you in a very different way. And you can be a politician for anybody, you can be anything to anybody. 
But for a father and mother, you are the child. And all they care is your safety, all they care is any negative sentiment or news about you. So, cutting the long story short, Vasika, uh, any journey is not easy in India. Especially when you think you want to make a change, everybody has to go through it. That is why again and again I am telling you, align it to your passion. Since I am passionate, I am surviving. If you are not passionate, you cannot survive. Because when you always stand against the norm, when you say, okay, this is wrong, I am going to change it. When you stand against the norm, it is going to be brutal. Because everybody will come after you. I keep joking in coming out of politics that for other parts of India, they have one enemy. There is one opposition, one ruling. For BJP in Tamil Nadu, it is not one enemy. Morning, if I put the Indian king. After the Indian king. Then, the evening TV fight with Congress. The late evening TV fight with the Thirumavalamana, VCK. The communist friends will come just before dinner. Here it is ideological. And your fight is so spread across political parties. It is not one-to-one. So many state one-to-one. So you got the answer to all these parties because they all come from a different ideology. And here Tamil I mean, Nadu politics is so brutal because it takes so much out of your mind and you are always there. So make a decision, right decision, passionate decision and everybody who come here, Modi and everybody have survived this onslaught they have come. That is why I feel so confident. This is not a place to talk politics and, and my friends from Congress and, and, and different parts of uh, the country, they come here, they keep talking and many eminent people come here. And I generally believe outside the country, I have this policy, I will never criticize any political leader. I have this in my, in my, in my heart. When I step out of my country, I never criticize the leader. Within the India, we will criticize. That is our country, we will criticize. But outside the country, no, I will not do that. But having said that, when, when a politician comes through that crowd, you can always put your penny on it. When you, when you have to bet on a politician, you have to see what grain they have got. Uh, did they come the easy way? Was everything open to them? And they just have to be at the right place, right time when it happened. And when they born into somebody's family, that for them doors open. And when you have to put your penny on some politician, always see what background they came from. That is why Bodhiji, I keep telling everyone that is a great leader. And many of you agree, even in the western side of the world is, that he has come the hard way. Hard way shapes a man. So when you give them a power, they are accountable to you. They are unemotional and they always do the right thing. 